Yo, what's going on everyone? My name is Benjamin Nowak and this is the Smallmouth Experience. And in today's video, we're going to be talking about swim jig fishing for smallmouth bass. Now, I recently posted a video yesterday where I was fishing a swim jig and catching some fish. So that's going to pop out up here for you guys. Go check out that video because there's some awesome catches and some awesome commentary about me talking about where I'm fishing this bait and how I'm using it. So go check out that swim jig fishing video. But this video here, we're talking about specifically smallmouth focused swim jigs. Now, I know this catches all three species, but if you live down south, you're fishing around heavy cover, uh, heavy lines, heavy hook situations. These are not the gear that you're going to want to go catch those fish, but you might learn some sneaky tips and tricks that you guys can take down south and catch those big largemouth as well. So we're going to talk about open water, isolated cover situations for big smallmouth bass with the swim jig. The way we're going to break this video up is the same way I did that tube and that finesse swim bait fishing video. Start by talking about when I'm fishing it, where I'm fishing it, and how I'm fishing it. And then we'll move into the physical gear that I'm using to be successful and confident fishing this bait. And a little backstory about how I got started fishing a swim jig. Now, I've fished it for the past couple of years, but I didn't really develop full confidence in it until last season. And what happened last season was I had the opportunity to follow around a couple guys on the FLW Tour. One of those guys, his name is Brian Schmidt, and he is one of the most prominent swim jig fishermen in the country. He lives out east. He fishes in Maryland or on the Potomac River, Chesapeake Bay, but he takes a swim jig everywhere he goes and he finds a way to be successful with it. It is his confidence bait. So if you guys don't know who Brian Schmidt is, go check him out. All of his social media platforms, Instagram, Facebook, um, YouTube. The dude is a phenomenal swim jig fisherman, has a lot of great information out there. And he's the one that really gave me the confidence in some of the information I needed to be successful with the swim jig. So let's start by talking about when I'm going to fish this bait. And for me, a swim jig excels in the springtime around shallow cover situations. When those fish are starting to push up shallow to get ready for pre-spawn, getting ready to feed up, get fat for the spawn, all the way through the post-spawn, that's when a swim jig is going to excel. After the post-spawn and those fish start to move back out deep, I'm going to put this bait away in favor of more traditional uh, smallmouth style baits like open hook swim baits or tubes or those other baits that will excel better in that deeper water situation. But throughout the spring, a swim jig will stay on my deck, tied on because it catches a lot of big smallmouth bass. Kind of using that as a segue to talk about where I'm fishing this bait. Typically, this is a shallow water bait, no more than about 12 foot of water. After that 12 foot of water, I'll put this bait down in favor of other baits, but it really excels in that shallow water around shallow cover, whether that's docks, rocks, laydowns, this bait fishes through all of those things really effectively. But one of the most prominent areas that will fish a swim jig is around shallow grass. And the reason for that is because a lot of smallmouth style baits that don't feature a weed guard will get bogged down in that grass. And one of the biggest fish I caught last year, I caught up in Canada with my buddy Adam Valley. We were fishing around shallow grass in like four to six foot of water and I was fishing the swim jig and I noticed a hole in the grass and what I was doing was fishing this bait along, kind of ticking the top of that grass. When I found that hole, I killed this bait and it started to fall in that grass and that's when that giant 6-2 came out and ate the swim jig. Well, had I been fishing like a traditional open hook swim bait or something, I might not have been able to get that fish out of the grass or fish the bait as cleanly as I did a swim jig. So it works phenomenally around shallow grass as well as it does that shallow hard cover as well. Now typically on inland reservoirs, which is what I fish a lot in the mainland of Michigan, um, I'm fishing it around docks, seawalls, and shallow cover. I don't target grass as much for smallmouth because on our natural style bodies of water, our inland reservoirs, um, a lot of times those fish are going to hang out more main lake near that deeper water situations where that grass really isn't as big of a player. So I'm typically targeting hard cover. Seawalls are one of my main places that I'm going to be using the swim jig, especially on those inland reservoirs because that's where those fish are going to pull up and move off of when they go up to spawn. Uh, get on those shallow you know, seawalls with some rock on it and chunk rock that's going to break up the current. So I'm targeting isolated pieces of cover on those seawalls in that really skinny like three to six foot of water range where those smallmouth are pulling up to feed and spawn and get fat again before they move back out into that deeper water situation. So inland lakes, inland reservoirs, I'm fishing typically hard cover situations. When I get out to the Great Lakes, this is where I'm going to use that, that um, swim jig around some of that grass and some of that really shallow spawning flat style situation. So on the Great Lakes, I'm looking for isolated grass patches, isolated pockets that have shallow grass growing on it, 
or spawning flats with big boulders. The reason this works so well around those spawning flats is that those fish can see it, they can key in on it from a long ways away, and they'll come up out from behind those boulders and smash this thing. So typically, Great Lakes situations, I'm looking for those spawning flats, spawning bays, where these fish are pushed up in that shallow water, keying on, on little bait fish or crawfish or gobies, or things that swim by them on those shallow flats, and they can come out and smash this thing. Another great place on those Great Lakes that I mentioned was the grass again, and they'll typically hang out around those grass edges. On the Great Lakes, the grass edges can be a really key deal, because a lot of, the, a lot of times those fish won't get bogged down on the grass itself, They'll sit more on the edges of it. So you'll take this bait, you'll cast it along the edge of that grass, um, and you'll be able to fish this bait along super effectively. Now, how I fish this bait. Most of the time I fish it on basically a straight retrieve. So I know guys down south fish it with a, a constant pop or pulse in their rod. They call it like the southern swim jig hop or something, the Alabama shake. But for me, it's just a steady retrieve and then I'll turn the reel handle a little bit faster. You want some sort of change in that cadence because these fish will track it for a long ways. When that bait changes speed or it falls or it dips, that's when you're going to get a lot of your bites. Especially what I'll do is I'll target, you know, let's say the corner of a seawall. So I'll cast this bait up past the corner of that seawall, be fishing it along. And when I know that bait is like right by the corner, I'll stop my retrieve for a second so that bait falls. And then once it falls a little bit, I'll speed up that retrieve. So basically it's coming along steady corner of the sea wall, it drops and then speeds up like a fleeing bait fish. That's when I get a lot of my bites is on that change in the cadence. But typically it's a straight retrieve and then I'll throw like a, a little real flare in there to get those fish to commit. Um, because a lot of times they'll track it when that bait changes direction. That's when you're going to get a lot of your bites. You can also do the th same thing by changing the way that your rod angle is set by throwing pops in your rod or pulses in your rod will cause that bait to dive and rise, which can be a really good technique as well. But you want to throw some sort of change in the cadence when you're fishing this bait to get it to dive or fall or change direction on those fish. And that really is when you're going to get a lot of your bites. And if I look back at all of my old footage, almost all of my bites will come on some sort of change in cadence when I get it near some sort of cover where those fish are hanging out around it. Now, when you're setting the hook, and this is something that a lot of people are going to struggle with and they're going to put a swim jig down for, is because they'll miss some fish when they're going to set the hook with a swim jig. With a swim jig, you want to sweep the rod to the side. And this is something you can take to all of your moving bait techniques. The reason for this, when you set the hook, you want to sweep the rod to the side, is the way this bait is coming through the water, that fish is going to typically come up behind it and keep coming with that bait. Well, once he gets it in his mouth, and they'll choke on this thing, they'll eat the whole bait. If you set the hook straight up, what happens? You're rolling that swim jig straight up like this. You're blowing their mouth open, and they're not getting the hook in their mouth. If you pull this bait to the side, what will happen is that bait will actually pull forward straight rather than up and blow their mouth open, and you'll get them hooked in the corner of the mouth or in the top of the mouth when you pull this bait straight towards you. So a sweeping hook set is something you really want to practice with some sort of moving baits. Same thing with swim baits or crank baits. Anything moving through the water, I'd like to use a sweeping hook set because if that fish is coming to me, I want to move that line forward with them as much as possible, pick up as much of that slack as I possibly can. And a lot of the swim jigs or all the swim jigs that I throw have a finesse style hook. So when I sweep that bait forward, when I pick up that slack with the rod, it will help me get that finesse hook, that light wire hook, skin or hooked into the top of their skin of their mouth. And that's the way that I like to cassette the hook with any sort of moving bait. So kind of keep that in mind. When you go out to throw this thing around, don't try to jack these fish like you're fishing a standard style slow moving jig. Fish it like you're fishing a moving bait. Sweep your rod to the side on your hook set and you're going to land a lot more fish than you would have typically landed if you used your standard style jig hook set. Now let's start to talk about the gear that I'm throwing this bait on. And we're going to start with the jig itself because this is really kind of important for smallmouth. I'm not using a heavy hook swim jig. I am using actually a homemade style swim jig with a light wire hook. But what you really want to focus on is finding a light wire hook swim jig. Some of the best on the market, the um, Beast Coast Gorilla Swim Jig is a really good one that has a moderate light hook. The Nichols light wire finesse swim jig is really good. 
Or there's one called the Lethal Weapon 2 that has a light wire swim jig hook in it as well. You want something with a light wire because you're not typically fishing around super heavy cover. And because you're fishing it on fluorocarbon line with a moderate um, medium heavy rod, you don't want something that's going to take a ton of power to punch through their mouth. You also don't need all of that beef because you're not fishing around that really heavy cover. So a lighter wire hook is going to result in way more fish catches. Now this jig here is one that I made by hand. It is a Do It Molds weedless casting jig, um, but it is a 3 8 ounce swim jig. And there are two sizes of swim jigs that I throw. A 3 8 for basically six foot, eight foot or less. And then once I get that six or eight foot or deeper, I'm going to a half ounce. And the trailers that I'm gonna choose are going to dictate also the depth that I fish the swim jig down to because different trailers are going to have different um, impacts on the depth that your swim jig will fish. So three eighths or a half are the only size swim jigs that I throw. I know a lot of guys that go to a quarter or even lighter than that, but for me that three eighths ounce is the lightest I throw even in three foot of water because I can keep this bait up by changing the trailer that I put on this bait. So three eighths for eight foot or less, a half for eight foot or deeper and typically no deeper than 12 foot of water, 15 foot of water, depending on where I'm fishing. The colors that I'm using, I keep it really, really simple. There are three colors. I fish a dark swim jig, so a black and blue, a June bug, um, some sort of dark profile for that tannic style body of water that I have up here a lot in the north. Uh, Canada has a lot of that tannic water as well, so a June bug or a black and blue works really, really effectively. A bluegill or a perch style color, like this one right here. This is green pumpkin with blue flash. Um, looks just like bait fish, especially in that little bit cleaner water situations. I'll fish this one a lot on the Great Lakes where they're keying in on perch or emerald shiners. This kind of natural green pumpkin blue looks like a variety of different bait fish and gets a lot of big bites in that cleaner water situation. Or a crawfish color. In this crawfish color, I fish a lot on the inland reservoirs as well. When they're keying in on crawfish, they're up shallow, but the water's still too clean for that dark color swim jig. I'll fish a crawfish color, and then you can change the trailer to change what that bait looks like in the water column. So my Great Lakes colors are these green pumpkins, and my inland colors are basically this dark or this crawfish style color, and then I'll change the trailer to match the bait. The trailers that I'm throwing, and I already mentioned this, are going to impact the way that bait acts coming through the water. So there are two styles of trailers that I'm going to throw. A kicking style, craw style trailer, and a swim bait style trailer. Now those craw style trailers, like your net or your zoom speed craw, your gambler burner craw, or your rage craw, are going to keep that bait higher in the column. If I want to keep this bait up, and have that bait keeled out very flat so it runs true almost constantly, you're gonna want a kicking style trailer. These arms moving kind of in conjunction with that bait are going to keep it running very, very straight through the water. If you want your bait to run deeper or have more of a roll side to side, then I'll go to a swim bait style trailer like the Gambler Little Easy. Now the Little Easy for me is one of my favorite trailers when I'm fishing on the Great Lakes around deeper water grass. The reason I like the Little Easy, it doesn't have a ton of side to side kick so your bait will run relatively true, but it looks like minnows a little bit better than some of these more kicking style craw trailers. Now don't get me wrong, these kicking style craw trailers don't necessarily imitate crawfish. They can also be used to imitate bluegill or other sorts of bait fish, which is what actually what I predominantly use them for, but they will keep that bait higher in the water column. So when I'm fishing that deeper grass in the Great Lakes, I'll go to a swim bait style trailer that will let that bait ride lower in the water. My favorite kicking style trailers are either the Rage Craw, the Gambler Burner Craw, which has these kind of kicking appendages off the back, or the Zoom Speed Craw, Ultra Vibe Speed Craw. And the reason that I like these baits is they all have a very natural, very quick kicking action. Um, if I want to keep that bait super high, if I want to fish it in like three to six foot of water, I'll fish the Rage Craw and I'll bite it down. If I want to let that bait go just a little bit deeper, I'll fish some of these smaller profiles that have a little bit smaller appendages because it'll let that bait get deeper in the water. The colors that I'm fishing are super simple. Green pumpkin, black and blue, and some sort of craw color. Some orange with brown in it. Um, craw color will be my three main color selections. In that swim bait, I'm fishing a black and blue or I'm fishing the copper field color. The Little Easy is the go-to. It is the perfect size. You'll bite it down just a little bit. 
you'll thread that bait on just like that. And uh, you don't want too big of a profile with the swim jig, especially for smallmouth. So you want to bite that bait down, basically have the hook come out just before where that tail slot is. And it'll give you the perfect profile for those Great Lakes smallmouth. Moving into the rod reel and line setup, um, because this is where I think you can get the most dialed in. I like something seven foot to seven foot three inches long. You don't want to have too long of a rod because you're typically making targeted casts to certain pieces of cover or structure. So that seven foot to seven three is perfect. But then you want a medium heavy rod. You don't want to go too heavy using light wire hooks. So you don't need something insanely heavy to drive that hook home. This is a TFO 735 rod. It is a seven foot three medium heavy power. They call it a fast, but it runs kind of like a moderate fast action, which is perfect for those swim jigs. Now, another great rod is a uh, Fitzgerald Rods Brian Schmidt swim jig specific rod. I love this 735, but if you want something a little bit shorter, or you want to support Brian Schmidt, that's the only reason I'm saying this. He has a swim jig dedicated rod that he helped them design, and um, Brian Schmidt's the dude, so I want to kind of give you guys that option as well. But something between seven foot and seven foot three is going to be that perfect length for fishing a swim jig. Short enough where you can make targeted casts, but long enough where you can sweep that hook, get that bait moving to you, and get a really positive hookup ratio. The reel that you're going to throw on it is a six speed gear ratio reel that's going to help you keep that bait. Kind of moving slowly even if you get really excited and start to reel too fast that bait's not going to move super quickly through the water with a six speed reel so this is a lose um, tournament mg reel it's a really old lose reel i don't think they make this anymore but you want a six speed gear ratio reel and then i'm throwing this on 14 pound test fluorocarbon line really something between 14 to 17 pound test will help you have the most success with the swim jig if you're not fishing it around really heavy grass or really heavy cover, I suggest going 14 or 15 pound. But if you get a little bit nervous, you're fishing around a lot of docks, bump up to that 17 pound test. Um, and that's just really personal preference. But that 14 pound test is what I have on this reel right here. Now I want to give you guys one more tip that will help save you a lot of time and money out there on the water. And that is using super glue. And this is something that I kind of realized later in the year last season and I tried to fish a swim jig all year long and my most of my success was in the spring but using super glue will help you save money on trailers what you're going to do is when you go to thread your bait up on that swim jig and this trailer stuck in the skirt what you'll do is when you're almost ready to thread that bait fully on put a dab of super glue on there push that bait up and you can keep that bait on your swim jig a lot longer. So this is the jig that I was throwing in that video the other day. This is the only trailer that I put on there all day. Now you will get some short strikes where the, the craws fall off your trailer, but this little tip using super glue will help that bait stay on so much longer, especially if you're skipping or fishing it around really heavy cover. That super glue will save you so much time and money and effectiveness from, from having to like constantly re-thread your trailer every couple of casts. So use super glue. It will make a big difference when you're fishing a swim jig. So if you guys have any questions or comments about any of the gear, any of the topics that I talked about in this video, please do me a huge favor. Leave a comment down below and I'll be down there responding to each and every one of you guys. If you guys are not already, please do me a huge favor. Hit subscribe. It'll let you know when I post more videos just like this one here. Go check out that video I posted yesterday, fishing a swim jig. As always, thank you guys for watching. Take care, Ted Lines. God bless. Pursue passion.